Welcome to the Air Gun Show. This week we've got the pump action Humorex RP5 CO2 powered air pistol on test. But before that, I'm heading out on a nighttime ratting session. Well, I've come out onto the farm after some rats tonight. Now, the weather is absolutely horrendous. It keeps pouring down with rain, but I'm still fairly confident that we should get a few. Um, I've shot this particular area a few times recently, but I've been using lamping kit. Um, the rats are starting to get a little bit wary, so I've come back this evening with night vision gear just to increase stealth a bit. Now, this farm's a mixed holding. The rats are attracted here uh, by the feed that's put out for livestock and also for stored grain. It's, it's not exactly overrun with them, but nonetheless there are a few around and we should see a few tonight. I've set up inside a barn and that's for a couple of reasons. Now, the main one being that it, if it does get wet, the roof here is going to protect us and the equipment from the rain. But also it is, it is one of the more productive areas here um, and the spot that I've chosen it enables me to cover a couple of hotspots. One of them being um, inside here, there are a lot of stacked pallets um, and rats like to hide underneath those pallets and use the back of the shed as a run that they use to access some feed sacks that are stored here. Apart from that, I can also cover the outer edge of the building and along that area, there's a lot of junk and a bit of cover there. Um, and it's, it's a run that the rats tend to use to get into here. The handy thing is that it's covered by a lean-to. So my thinking is that if it does get very wet, that shouldn't discourage the rats from going about their business as usual. Now obviously this sort of setup does mean that I'm setting up an ambush rather than just wandering around the farm looking for opportunities. And quite frankly, I prefer that sort of approach. Firstly, it enables me to use the sticks. I've got a really stable setup here. I'm sat on a stool, shooting off of sticks makes for very accurate, steady shooting. On top of that, it means that I've also been able to predetermine the distances that I'm going to be shooting over. Now, generally, I'm expecting the rats to be attracted by those feed sacks, but also along a couple of their runs, I've put the usual splodges of liquidized cat food that I use just to help to keep rats still. And, and by doing that, it means that I've been able to choose areas, and most of them are between about 12 and 16, 17 meters away. So again, it's just that I know I'm shooting over a predetermined distance and it makes it easy for me to get hold over and hold under right if I need to use it. Um, the setup this evening, I'm using the Brocock Bantam HR, a very accurate regulated PCP, a 10 shot multi shot magazine as well. So that's gonna save me from having to fumble around trying to reload in the dark. It's uh, sub 12 foot pounds, 177 caliber. Um, I've coupled that with the ATN Excite night vision unit. Again, I mentioned earlier, I'm using NV just for the increased stealth that that will give me over the lamping tactics that I have been using here. Um, and the pellet choice this evening is the QYS domed pellets that re we reviewed a few episodes back. Again, I was quite impressed with them initially. I've tried them in this gun. It really likes them. So I'm out ratting with them this evening. Right, well, that's the setup. Now this is quite a busy farm. There's usually a lot of disruption from vehicles, farm workers, and obviously there's a lot of livestock here. So the rats can tend to be fairly bold. Nonetheless, I'm gonna try and be quiet now. We're gonna keep still and hopefully start bagging a few rats. The camera is picking up a lot of glare from the infrared illuminator, but that's because we're filming in night vision. It's practically invisible to the naked eye, so I'm shooting from the cover of complete darkness. The tactics work, and I soon spot a rat out on the prowl.
and that was one under those pallets. It looked like it was eager to get to the nearest bait spot, but didn't get a chance to get there. It's always encouraging to account for the first rat of the night, and I don't have to wait very long for the next one. That one was on the outer edge of the building. Like the last one, it was pretty close to a bait spot. I could see it sniffing the air, but again, I didn't give it a chance to get there. It's another rat in the bag. That one was very close to where I had the last one. Um, I could also see another pair of eyes moving around in the cover behind it, so there are obviously a few rats on the move now. It's good to know that there are rats out and about. My task now is to keep scanning around the bait spots and other likely areas so I can pick them off when they venture away from cover. Well, there you go. Hopefully you'll be able to see that that one was really close to where I'd shot the last one. And again, there were more eyes moving in the cover behind it. They, they really do seem to like it in that undergrowth. It certainly seems like I've picked the right spot. It's a cold night but you don't really notice the weather when you're getting a few shots. There was another one from that same spot now. I've only been shooting for about half an hour. We're already starting to build a decent bag. Hopefully things will continue like this. There was nothing out, but I did see some eye shine again then. There do seem to be a lot of rats on the move in that area. one was behind the feed sacks but it was having a right go at a bait spot that I put down on a bit of an old pallet behind there. Now that smelly liquidized cat food really is a brilliant way to keep rats still and get you those nice easy shots. was another one under those pallets. I mentioned earlier on that rats do like the cover of pallets and I think the thing is when they're scuttling around underneath and amongst them they just know that natural predators like owls and foxes 
really can't touch them. So they are quite confident when they're in that sort of cover. Obviously they're not counting on the fact that I'm sat here with night vision sniping them with an air gun. was a close one. It was only about 10 metres away, so I did have to give it quite a bit of hold over to get that headshot. Um, it had been quiet for about three quarters of an hour before that one, so things are certainly starting to slow down now. We didn't have to wait so long for that one. And that one was having a right old munch on the bait spot. Activity really is slowing down now, but I'm still glimpsing the odd rat, so I'm not packing up just yet. Here's another one. I just need it to turn around and offer me a clear shot at its head. quite a long wait again. Uh, it's starting to get cold which is no great surprise considering I've been sat still for quite some time now. However we'll give it a bit longer and see what happens. Another long wait follows but I do eventually spot another rat. This one thinks it's safe amongst the shelter of the pallets, but that certainly won't be the case if it settles and offers me a shot. Right, well it seems like a sensible time to wrap it up now. The wind's picked up and it's got pretty cold. And on top of that, the activity has tailed off to next to nothing. Um, I've been sat here for about three hours. I'm starting to feel cold and uncomfortable. So the appeal of heading home for a hot drink and something to eat is certainly starting to take over from the ratting. I can't complain though. The kit's performed well so it's enabled me to take advantage of the opportunities that I have had. And to be fair, it was quite a busy start and it remained fairly steady throughout most of the evening, so it certainly feels like it's been worth being here. Now, I've still got plenty of other visits to put in. There are still a lot of rats left, but it does feel like we've made a worthwhile contribution to the rat control on the farm here. A decent evening's ratting there, and hopefully plenty more to be had this winter. Now, it's the Air Gun Show News. This is the Air Gun Show News. 2019 could be a challenging year for field sports, according to leading political figures. Basque chairman Peter Glenzer said the year presented some serious challenges, including fighting the ban on shooting on Welsh public land, solving the problem of medical involvement in firearms licensing and the political uncertainties of Brexit. And the Environment Secretary Michael Gove has said the no-deal Brexit could present huge difficulties for small businesses in the countryside. Reckon you can make a difference to the future of shooting. Basque is looking for people to stand for its council. If you're successful, you'll be on the National Governing Board of the UK's biggest shooting organisation. To put yourself forward, download an application form from the Basque website and send it to the Chief Executive by the end of the month. Elections will be held later this year. 
kick off your egging exploits in 2019 with the latest issue of Egg and Shooter magazine. This one's got a free wall planner for this year so you can plan all your hunting outings, game fair visits and target shoots. Inside the mag you'll find winter wood pigeon shooting tips, farmyard hunting advice and a roundup of cold weather coats, plus a review of the FX Crown. Pick up Egg and Shooter in Good News Agents or visit myfavouritemagazines.co.uk. And finally, with voting still taking place in the Great British Shooting Awards, we take a look at a category air gunners should definitely have their say in. It's the Apparel of the Year Award, and the nominees are Ariat Catalyst Defiant, Hakila Pro Hunter X, Ridgeline Seasons Jacket, Showfull Ptarmigan Coat, and the Swazi Rifleman Gen 2. Which do you think should win? Have your say by heading to greatbritishshootingawards.com. That was the Egg and Show News. To say this week's test gun is eagerly anticipated is something of an understatement. I first saw the Umar XRP5 at the British Shooting Show almost a year ago. This innovative CO2 powered pistol is now in the shops and having put a few pellets through it, I certainly reckon it was worth the wait. The RP5 comes in several variations and can be further modified by the addition of numerous accessories. There's a 9 foot pound carbine model, but this is the pistol version which retails for £259.95. That's by no means cheap for an air pistol, but it is very well made and comes with some great features, including a neat five shot magazine that's driven by a pump action. The pistol measures a relatively long 42 centimetres from end to end and tips the scales at just over 1.2 kilos. Weight bias is towards the front end, but it comes on to aim very nicely and the extended forend makes for a stable hold and a very pointable gun. Constructed from black anodised metal and tough polymer, the ambidextrous RP5 looks neat and feels good in the hand. The pistol grips are comfortable and feature textured grooves for an improved purchase, as does the forend. This pistol fires lead pellets and has a quality barrel. It's housed inside a neat vented shroud that's threaded at the end to accept a silencer. It goes off with quite a bark, so you may well want to fit one to prevent your backyard plinking sessions from annoying your neighbours. If you do fit a silencer, you'll need to make sure that it doesn't get in the way of the front sight element, which sits atop the barrel shroud. The rear element is adjustable by means of a screwdriver and can be adjusted for windage and elevation. Available accessories include an underside accessory rail and a Picatinny type scope rail, though standard dovetail rails are fitted as standard. That means you can easily kit out the RP5 with a telescopic sight, and I certainly think that it's accurate enough to justify that additional outlay. The supplied instructions are quite vague, but fortunately loading up with 12 gram CO2 capsules is very easy. Simply slacken off the front piercing cap, then unscrew and remove the whole of the front cap from the front of the cylinder. Remove any spent capsules if you've got any in there, then insert your fresh ones. The first one goes in neck end first, and the second one goes in neck end last. Then screw the front cap back on, tighten down the piercing cap, and you're ready for business. Both capsules exhaust into the cylinder. I would expect some variation in terms of power and shot count, but I've been getting just over five foot pounds and it's returning more than a hundred pretty consistent shots from the two capsules. I think the RP5's cleverest features are its pump action and neat five shot magazine. Push in the side switch and pump back the forend and the magazine pops out. Pellets are loaded in from the rear while pushing the tray across from the right to the left to tension the spring and expose another port as each one goes in. When the magazine is fully loaded, snap it back into place and push forwards the fore end grip to probe home the first pellet. 
The gun is now loaded and cocked. Start shooting and you can take full advantage of the pump action at the heart of this pistol. The RP5's trigger is very good. The wide blade gives plenty of feel and is very positive in operation. First stage weight and travel feel just right and it comes to a distinct stop before breaking very predictably. There's a safety catch positioned just above the pistol grips. It slides back and forth very positively and can be operated from either side. It's safe when it's in the forward position and you push it back when you're ready to fire. I think that's most of the RP5's key points covered. Let's take a look at what it shoots like. Well, pistol shooting and open sights are not my forte, but I was shooting rested then just to really get an idea of the gun's accuracy potential. And at 10 meters, that group is probably fairly close to an inch, which I think for open sights, certainly for me, is, is pretty impressive. Um, but more importantly than that, and what I couldn't really fully appreciate shooting like this, is the fun of having that pump action. And what I really think this is, is more of a fast fire plinking gun that's going to be brilliant fun on novelty targets and tin cans. So that's the Humorex RP5, a quality German made recoilless CO2 pistol with a neat five shot magazine and pump action cocking and loading system. It's pretty accurate, but I certainly regard it as a high-end plinking pistol. And if you want a gun that's gonna be great fun in the garden, this is certainly one to try. That said, the more powerful nine foot pound carbine model could even have the clout to take on a bit of close range ratting. Look out for the new and improved Airgun Shooter magazine, packed full of technique, gear and insight from some of the best shooters in the industry. Brand new look and free video content. Pick up your copy today in stores or online. That's all for this week, but we'll be back again in a fortnight. Thank you for watching and please don't forget to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. And if you aren't already a member of the BASC, have a look at their website and check out the benefits you could be taking advantage of through Airgun Membership.